From April 12th through the 20th, there is going to be another a trip to Egypt. Uh, this trip is going to include Israel also. I just fell in love with Egypt during my last trip there. I could uh, relate to the wisdom of the ancient Egyptians. And I felt instantaneously that the gods are ready to come alive. After many, many thousands years of silence. And I myself going to play a key role in bringing them into the consciousness of people. The gods and goddesses of Egypt are ready to help humanity. They have known at a time that is inconceivable to us, 5,000 years from now. A wisdom that is amazing. That wisdom is not science, modern Western science. That is a spiritual science. It is through the spiritual science they put together their temples. When I was in the Giza pyramid, I looked at the rocks. How were they moved to the place? Not by human intelligence. We have to get back and look at our own history, the history of humanity. And to use the wisdom that we once had and uh, which we forgot or dumped. It's time that we take a look at <clears throat> these archetypes. And I just, I'm just going to show you the statue of Isis. She's for real. She's an archetype. She will come alive if you make a contact with her. She was an Egyptian goddess, later became adopted by the Greeks. The Isis name is a Greek name. The Egyptian name is Isha. Whatever name you call, you can call her Parvati the Hindu goddess. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's a science. It's a spiritual science. You can make any god or goddess to come alive, but by paying attention to them and, and observing certain rituals that will make those archetypes to come and be present for you. The Greeks put together a great temple for Isis. I was able to go to that temple. And there is another god, and he is called Jehuti. Jehuti is a god with a, a bird's face, and he is responsible for... Uh, for alphabets, for learning. And he reminds me of two personalities in the Indian scene. One is Kakabhujinda, the immortal saint who never died and who became himself a god, godhead. The other one is Brahma, the creator god. They had the secret of the syllables. 
If you want to have omniscience, you don't have to go and read all the disciplines, physics, chemistry, mathematics, literature, all the other languages. It's impossible to do that. But with one single syllable, that you can master the entire wisdom and that enables you to know everything, that is omniscience. And that you can acquire through the help of this Jahuti, who is Brahma, who is the god of the Vedas. For me, going to Egypt means to establish contact with those deities. The land is itself is filled with these deities. Everywhere you go, you have the statues of Isis, uh, Jahuti, and Horus, the sun god. He is the sun god. We were able to uh, go to the most ancient uh, shrine for the sun god, Horus, during the last visit. We are also going there, except for the fact that we are going at the most auspicious time when the sun is entering into Aries. We want to be at the place. It, it's a ruin, but then the circular disk is still there and we are going to climb up and I just uh, wanted that to happen at the most astronomically potent time and that happens to be the sun entering into Aries. I just wanted to add a few other things uh, in the trip because uh, we are close by to Mount Sinai, a great mount, a sacred mount full of sacred history connected with Moses and many other personalities who all went to the mountain to get connected with the divine. So we are going to go to Mount Sinai. Then we are going to go to Jericho where Jesus acquired his spiritual powers, Siddhi powers, the powers to perform miracles, the 40 days and 40 nights, his temptations with the devil and his conquest. And we are going to go there and be in that energy field. And also the birthplace of Jesus, Bethlehem. Jesus, like nobody has done like what Jesus has done to humanity. He is everywhere. His message of love has touched every part of the world. He was also there for the same reason as the Buddha or any other saint was, to end suffering, to end sinful existence. Sinful existence is ignorance, an enlightened condition. We should all have to evolve to a level, Jesus said, Father, your kingdom has to come down. As it is in heaven, why are we suffering? Suffering doesn't make sense to us. Please deliver us. He didn't ask for, give me a lot of money, make me a billionaire. And that's the wrong prayer. The right prayer should be, like, give me my daily bread. Don't get, don't tempt me so that I will be lost in this maya. But my goal, the humanity's goal, the one goal for humanity is evolution, enlightenment. And that's the theme of this uh, tour and I will be giving seminars at every place uh, and trying to uh, bring parallels from all traditions. They're, the truth is this one, one, there is only one truth. There are many expressions of it. So we also go to Israel to look at the power spots 
there in that part of the country. Of course, there's a lot of unrest going on. Part of my reasons why I go there is to breathe that air and do some powerful prayers for world peace. I hope, if not all, some of you can join me on this great trip.